I'd like to congratulate the entire project team for this important milestone. Removing this wire has created a safer environment for the future cleanup. I'm Brian Stubbs. I'm the project manager at the Radio Isotope Development Laboratory 3026 East Cell Bank Demolition Project. So originally the hot cell was used to process uh, highly irradiated material from reactors. The scope of the project was to remove highly contaminated material from the last remaining hot cell and demolish the structure. My name is Derek Alt. I am a um, uh, health and safety manager at ORNL and we're doing decommissioning on uh, several facilities out there right now. About a year and a half ago, uh, I think it was December 2021, we identified a hot source. Using a camera, we were able to determine that uh, it looked like what seemed to be about a six inch wire and it was the diameter of a paper clip. It's a very small. During the characterization, we identified uh, 4,500 R per hour contact on the wire and at one foot it was 20 R per hour. Honestly, this was the highest uh, dose rate item that I've been involved with and you know when you look at hazards in the safety of personnel it's very serious. Uh, I think our group and UCOR takes these hazards very serious and we will do whatever we need to do to minimize exposures and keep people safe during the work process. When we began the project on the final hot cell we had to enter through the roof and so it was protected by uh, large and heavy shield plugs that had to be removed and so the innovations there we came up with a system to jack those up and remove the ceiling plugs which was quite a challenge for the project. So the team utilized long reach tools and a high resolution camera in order to retrieve this hot wire. You can imagine trying to pick up the hot wire off a table um, but, but then imagine being 20 feet above it trying to get it with long reach tools looking through your camera. It was in a location in a plastic tote that was very deteriorated and so the object for us was to remove it from the tote and put it in something in a five gallon bucket so that we did not lose this wire. It took a lot of coordination. It started with the waste experts who determined how to package properly and meet the requirements for the disposal facility. And then we determined how to get the material into that configuration. And that required all of our SMEs, everyone from engineering and hoisting and rigging, RADCON, and of course, craft involvement. During the planning process, waste specialists of transportation, radiological engineering, work planning, we all got together, uh, several walk downs, mock ups were involved, and we needed to come up with a package that would shield the high dose rates on this particular item. The drum was lined with concrete and it had a hollow annulus. The bucket was remotely lifted using long reach tools and placed inside the drum. And then the drum was brought out. It, was a, it, it definitely was a team effort. Everyone should be congratulated. We have more high hazard work upcoming and without a doubt, you course team will be uh, be ready to tackle any, any high hazard work. The wire will ultimately be disposed of in the disposal facility in Nevada. Now that the wire has been removed, we intend to use the water filtration system and remove sediment from the floor of the cells. Once the filtration system has been utilized to wash down the cells, we will continue to remove material using long reach tools until we've created an environment where we can safely put people inside and finish the deactivation work. Our goal is to finish pre-demolition activities late this year and demolish the structure in 2024.